All right, so welcome back. And here we are today, we're going to attempt some wiring. Now I quite like wiring, it's, uh, it's nice and clean. There's no refurbing to do, but you still have to mess around uh, choosing your runs correctly, uh, make sure there's no chafing and uh, you've got good lengths everywhere. And uh, it does make me wanna, wanna cry slightly because at the end of the day, we need to be fitting all of this and the engine management stuff all into the car. So, brace yourself, let's get cracking. Uh, just briefly before we start the wiring, I just want to show you a top tip. Um, on the fuel lines, uh, sometimes these um, Jubilee clips uh, sometimes fail or you just can't get them tight enough. Also, um, they're not always shaped very well for you to, you know, let alone get a screwdriver maybe into the restricted space you have. So you resort to a, to a ratchet and then some of these are misshapen and don't fit on. It does fit on this one. So uh, so what I've been doing, I've been switching these um, Jubilee clips out with something a bit more substantial, um, basically nut and bolt uh, type of clip instead. And these are a lot better. Um, they're, they're, they always fit a, fit a ratchet. And so I've just been pulling, pulling these out and fitting these clips in instead just so I can get them really tight around the fuel lines because that's somewhere I certainly don't want leaks. And I just wanted to show a tool, this may not be new to you, but basically it's, um, it's, a, it's a regular ratchet, okay? Um, but you can also twist the handle. And you can see here, um, no matter which way you twist here, it's rotating the same way. And it's really good for restricted space just to do something up real tight and then you can just do a final, a final, uh, a final ratchet. Obviously, um, obviously it changes directions, but you can just twist that. You can keep on twisting it or twist it back and forth and, uh, and, and ratchet as well. So I just wanted to show you that uh, from Stanley. Can't remember what it's called, but um, it's dead handy. Right, let's have a look at some wiring. All right, so just by starting, you get a better idea of what's going on and it becomes a little bit simpler. The instructions are excellent, uh, or the diagrams are in there and uh, even the uh, separate legs of uh, the, this wiring loom is labeled up. Um, although it does say here, this is leg four, it says leg five in the instructions, but the description underneath uh, for near side front is correct. So that's all good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, start threading these um, front legs through the um, gaps that are left up in the bodywork. Okay, uh, just so it sort of clears out this um, this uh, passenger bay area and gets the loom more into the position that it needs to uh, to go. I'm going to use some temporary zip ties and zip tie this uh, main section of the, of the loom here uh, up underneath. I'm going to put some uh, brackets along the top there uh, to hold it all in place and for further zip tying it properly to later to stop it chafing and moving. Um, so that's all good. I'm going to put the rear leg here. Um, it needs to run underneath the door along with the suitable um, positive power cable. Uh, that's going to run underneath and I like to go fairly high up and tuck it through into the wheel uh, arch there and it runs along the top of the wheel arch and then back into the um, boot. So I'm just going to start tidying that up and see where it's all going to go and how it hangs, trying to keep its uh, natural shape as much as possible so there's no strain uh, put on into the, any of the wires. And then we're going to have a look about uh, mounting um, all these all these bits of wire and fuses etc um, up on the uh, the bar there or I might fashion a small plate just to bring it down a couple of inches. So let's get started with that. Okay so we're having a, a medium good time at the moment. Um, just gonna say what's going on here uh, for my own sanity if not for the video. Um, so we've got this connector here uh, that is for the windscreen wiper motor. And then we've got these two connectors up here, which I'm pretty confident are for left and right controls um, on the steering column. So windscreen wipers, etc., and indicators uh, and lights and, and all that good stuff. So I'm pretty confident that that's what those two are for uh, and another earth. Um, 
another earth big earth going um, up to the wiper motor bracket so that will be there um, just put in a couple of supports here which I can use to zip tie everything and here we have the heater um, wires so I need to suss out which ones go to where I know we don't use all those connections because there's no speed setting it's just on or off these four connectors here we've got 11 8 6 and 3 they all go into the dashboard uh, connectors so they need to be fairly central I guess um, certainly certainly within the area of uh, of the center console so they can easily be plugged into the dash when you bring that in uh, then we've got um, a fuse block here and all the relays so they're going to be mounted kind of over here and that leg disappears off to the front left so that's all good all right then so first decision made now on my previous car i had the fuse uh, box section uh in facing into my engine bay which was really handy and looked quite professional it saves having so much bulk uh, underneath here and uh saves you fanning around underneath the dashboard uh down here also because you've got two blocks of relays to fit in here uh, it is it is a bit tight. So uh, with that I've made a hole up here and I'm just going to poke this uh, fuse box section through. It'd be really nice and uh, of course it's got the plastic uh, plastic cover on the front so I'm just going to mount that and see what it looks like. I'm then going to mount these uh, relays. Now um, you could mount them directly onto this uh, this scuttle bar here. Um, I think it's I think it's absolutely fine. That's what I did previously. Um, but just just to show that I'm doing something neatly and you know make it a bit more accessible perhaps, I'm just going to drop it on a sheet of uh, aluminium about an inch or so, so it's about, about down here. Um, you need to be careful how low you go. Uh, it was noted on my last IVA that uh, they would have, if it was any lower, they would have liked to see it protected with a sheet of plastic or something they're just thinking that the passenger was shot forward they wouldn't want to lose their knees on on this um so so i'm not going to drop it too, too much lower uh, just about there now because i'm having this here with the fuse box over here um that means that my other uh, bank of relays is going to go next to it uh it should probably go on this side because there's a connector here that needs to connect up to this uh connector uh, it's going to make this, um, uh, it's going to make it too short basically. So I'm just going to, uh, get another couple of those, um, blocks, blocks here and just make a little extension of about six, nine inches just to hook that up if it doesn't quite reach. But I think, uh, having this block of, uh, relays here with the next block there is, uh, going to look pretty good. So I'm just going to mount all that up and get a little sheet of alley and, uh, mount the relays up there. Let's have a look. All right, so a little bit of progress there. As you can see, I've got the fuse box now in the engine compartment, which is really nice, really accessible. Dead easy to pop that cover off and uh, get to the fuses. Uh, so uh, I haven't zip tied anything yet, but you can see here that this is all looking pretty neat and tidy straight along there. Now, um, I've left a gap here because um, you do have to fit the ECU somewhere from the engine management loom, etc. And I'm going to be mounting it just straight up here underneath uh, on the roof of the uh, passenger bay uh, compartment here. And you do need to leave room for a cable to, um, to come out here. So I'm just going to put a bit of um, end in, end uh, uh, rubber, rubber U protection on the side here so nothing can wear or anything but this cable will be coming out here and then going into the engine bay probably um, in the middle there through a nice uh, pretty grommet and along with the ECU you also have um, uh, another another block here which uh, fortuitously um, has the same fixings as all the others so that's just going to slide straight back on this block um, I've got a about 10 mil clearance here in case um, any trim or any carpet needs to come up here but in reality I think uh, I think it's going to end end about here because you can't see any of it um, 
but then this block can push back nice and flush and and uh, then you've got the big ECU connector here that will be clipping on the front of the box and the rest of the wiring looms straight out to uh, the engine bay. So that's uh, pretty nice. So I'm um, happy with all of that. So I think now I'm going to just make the holes for each of the legs that go down to the headlights, etc. Uh, down inside, you need to make a hole um, just inside the uh, just at the top of the wheel well so they can pass around the top of that and get to the headlights okay so that was all pretty simple i uh, just had to pass a grommet over all of these wires and then make a hole uh, up at the top of the footwell there and fit the grommet so uh chose the smallest one possible a little bit tough to get over some of these joints but uh it was okay in the end. So I've got all the wires uh, hanging out of the passenger side and we've got the wires uh, coming out here for the driver's side. Uh, what else did I do? I passed through also. Um, so you've got, uh, you've got a horn wire here and I also passed through the washer fluid motor uh, cable which is just a separate long one so i'm going to be buzzing through another grommet uh maybe about here straight through um to the horn and to the washer fluid so that's all fine and then uh hanging out the side here i guess you've got uh side indicator repeater um the brake fluid level and the brake uh switch so that's all fine and now I'll uh, tackle the back wiring loom. All right, so the rear wiring is well on its way. Uh, managed to get to the holes uh, for the rear loom and also your uh, power cable, um, quite nice and high up up here, uh, which is quite handy because uh, your outside sort of door skin uh, fits around here. You're gonna, uh, gonna have to mount blocks of wood if you're uh, fitting it yourself, blocks of wood uh, around here to support to support the door skin so this is a uh, so the holes are nice and high and won't get in the way um, so I'm quite pleased with that let's have a look underneath the wing here so I've got them as um I've got the cables as high as I can to keep them out of the way obviously of the wheel and these will go round into this nice uh, kind of channel around the top here I'll put some uh, plastic conduit around the power as well and then that will all go up uh, around the top of the wing, held in place by little zip ties, just to buzz a couple of holes in every uh, 25 centimetres or so. And then uh, they go and drop down into the boot there. Uh, on the way, uh, you've, got two, you've got two cables here, uh, which are for the boot light, I believe, number plate light and also your fuel level, level sender. So I'm gonna be buzzing a couple more holes in here and dropping them straight down inside, or maybe a little bit further back so they uh, can't be seen so much. Um, and uh, that is the rear wiring loom so far. Here we are with the uh, engine leg of the loom. Uh, so I had a nice result here. I've used uh, uh, an electrician's kind of through the wall um, grommet type of thing there to stop any chafing going through uh, the box, the fiberglass box there. Uh, so that's quite nice. Um, now I think I'm just going to add a couple of um, P-clips to those existing P-clips just to, uh, so the wire has something to sort of follow and uh, it's held nice and neatly uh, away from anything for the IVA man. Um, because there's a couple of wires that now need to get wrapped around the other side of the engine. Um, most noticeably, uh, I think um, the water temp is just down there, and then we've got to fit the oil um, pressure uh, sender unit just there, and then wires go on round to the alternator. So let's do all that. Okay then, so as we head round the engine bay with our wiring, and down the uh, front of the car uh, with the wires for the headlights. I just need to show you a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the front earth on both sides can go around and attach to this front chassis mount here. 
um, onto uh, just onto this, this bolt, but you do need to make sure you've scraped off some of the powder coat off the chassis uh, uh, on the other side. So um, make sure you get uh, up in up inside, however you can, from un underneath, and scrape off some powder coat. Second of all, uh, as I head round the engine bay, I need to fit the oil pressure sender unit, uh, and and uh, I think that makes the light go on and off uh, on the dashboard. And uh, you need to assemble, for, certainly for an LS3, you need to, we take out uh, what comes with the LS3, this unit here, and uh, throw that away. And then you need to assemble all of, all of these sections. Um, and they're basically just, just thread reducers, etc. Let me just show you that. So that is it. Uh, so this, uh, this one here, uh, that goes into the engine block. And then you need this uh, reducer so that you can put this unit in. Uh, this screws into the side of that. Once you've done all this up, you need to uh, add that last because you can't rotate this round with that attached. And then finally, this goes in. So I'm going to put all these in uh, uh, together now, nice and tight, and then put it all into the engine block and then turn it around and hopefully uh, this hole will line up uh, and give me space to add this unit. Right, so this unit didn't work out. It's a really good solution, uh, I thought. Um, but unfortunately, although the loom fit through it after I made it, uh, trimmed it out a little bit, um, I forgot totally about the massive positive uh, cable coming from the battery. And it was just not, not having any of it. And it was too tight to be comfortable. So we have reverted to a... Um, to a uh, grommet down here. Let's get you down here. So we've got a we've got a nice grommet in here. So we've got uh, the cables coming out. So I I put um, heat shrink tubing round uh, after I crimped the uh, the end on, and then I um, put some uh, of this uh, reflective uh, sheet uh, around the connections there because it's pretty close to the manifolds, and likewise on t on the starter motor as well. So after that, uh, we've got the temperature. Uh, up here so just cut that short and put the temperature um, sensor in there and wired that up and then around here we have uh, the oil sender and light unit um, so we cut those short and wired those up I just put them neatly underneath the uh, water pipes I've got here a couple of zip ties straight underneath so that's all tucked away uh, and now we're starting to look at other things because the cables that I've got left over from the AK loom, uh, a couple of them, I think, connect to the ECU. So I need to look at that. And also I'm going to, um, this, this cable here is also from the uh, AK loom and that needs to go to the alternator over here. Well, I didn't like the wire just going out. I contemplated going straight into the side of the passenger bay there and then popping out at, at, at the end. Uh, then it's just a short hop straight to the alternator. But um, if I don't need to make holes, I'm not going to. So I've measured the length and basically I, I'm making a hole uh, in here and I'm going to put a nice... Um, grommet around here from trigger handbrakes they do a really nice one there's quite a lot of stuff to to get through and uh, that uh, part of the ak loom uh, has enough reach to go back in here around and up inside the um, passenger bay there and then straight out uh, into the alternator so that'll be nice and neat and less holes and wires everywhere else for a much neater engine bay now the um the Canem's loom here, um, I did contemplate, you, it has got enough reach, uh, I did contemplate a lower down hole here, um, but it does just make this side of the bank uh, a little bit tight, getting to all the uh, connections, and it gives too much slack on the uh, near side. So I'm just going to bring it out nice and central. Uh, I did it on my last car. It makes two nice, neat branches coming out. Of course, we may be adding um, a mirrored plate across the top here, uh, which hides uh, 
anything that is nasty, even though it does look quite pretty at the moment. So, so I'm just going to do that. So I'm just waiting for my grommet so I can measure it up and make a nice hole. And then we can lay, lay that out and do some final connections. So I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. All right, so as I work my way around and wait for my grommet to install the ECU wire in, uh, I'm gonna do my uh, heater here. I've got a, I think it's a heat three from uh, Car Builder Solutions. Now, um, because it's just a, a push on, push off, uh, there's no variable speed option. So uh, I believe I'm still right. If I'm not, I will uh, edit this movie or add some notes over the top. Um, but you don't use the uh, black and yellow wire coming from the AK loom. You just got uh, earth and the one sort of speed wire, if you like. And I've put that into uh, the other end of the plug that you get with the uh, heater. And that uh, blue and yellow goes to orange, and the earth goes to and the earth goes to black. Uh, so this uh, unused black and yellow, I've just. Um, trimmed it shorter, put some heat shrink on the end so it can't touch anything and then we're just going to hide all the cables neatly and be able to plug that in. Okay so that's nice and neat and I'll just be uh, zip tying it up behind the support I put in and that is out of the way, it leaves plenty of room for the uh, dash connect plugs. All right let's do something else I know what connects up to. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video now to keep it kind of bite-sized. Um, that's most of the AK loom uh, that we've covered there. And next up, very soon, is going to be the Canems loom and then tying it all together and finishing touches. So uh, join me for that. See you again.